Welcome back to another Basics Game Maker Studio tutorial and today I'm gonna do a spin because I made a poll on my YouTube channel on DS Grids and therefore let's jump right into it. So what are we having here? So this is kind of a mini inventory system and then when I'm collecting with this uh, dude here uh, the tra trash on the street then <laughs> we're just getting our DS grid cell updated because this is just a number and then boom we're just saying like hey add one up when we are collecting one of those trash cans or coffee things or whatever that is so if you want to know how to do that and a few basics about DS grids then stick around this is one up indie I am a developer so if you like what you're seeing hey why not consider sharing, liking and of course subscribing to my channel. So basically what is a DS grid? Well, an Excel spreadsheet. So basically what you could have is, boom, um, well, two columns, a few rows, whatever you want to have it, you can define it the way you like it and boom, this is basically the whole thing. Of course, here we come to a few things which are noteworthy. So if you watch my other video tutorials or if you are using DS lists, then for example, the following it looks like. So basically you create a DS list and then you kind of create a new entry and then you add another entry and then you dynamically kind of create a stack of things which have indexes and then they just have one value. Um, this is pretty much it. And then for example, if you get rid of one, it's getting kind of auto sorted or whatever and then um, this thing has a specific size and then therefore it's a pretty neat resource to read in and out the s grids not having this kind of a luxury they are a little bit different so in our example um, to illustrate that we will have uh, well, two columns so basically we're going to separate it here and here and then here we're gonna store numbers which are indexes for those icons which we are gonna draw and then we are gonna draw the amount of which we are collecting so basically our DS grid will have uh, a size so of width of 2 and a height of 3 so hopefully that makes sense to you so let's jump right into game maker basically this is just an object I just drag it into the room and then um, I got those cookies or the jars that they just have a different index and then boom they're getting added so how does that look like in practice so let's get rid of most of that stuff so the first thing which you need to do is if you for example want to use a DS grid and then you say DS grid create and then store it into a variable this is a good standard but here you need to input a width and the height so it knows hey how big am I so this is not a dynamic resource which is kind of resizing for you uh, willy nilly you have to input those values and if you don't well it, this thing will crash and then uh, it's pretty useless to use so the first thing which you can do is you can set values to it so here what I did I just said hey DS grid set and for that it asks like hey which grid do you want to uh, set something then you need to input that stored TS grid and then you got column and row uh, indexes so basically it says X and Y value these are once again if we jump back to it uh, the here this is 0 0 and then it goes 1 2 and then uh, 0 1 and so on and basically they got their X and Y positions so this is how that works of course starting with zero a little bit confusing for example if you just say like hey uh, we have a width of two so basically um, you will have x position of zero one and round one basically <laughs> this is just it so here um, bear with me a little bit confusing but this is mathematics yay 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 the next thing so for example we got this so nothing is really happening so how can we show that well we can actually say like hey draw sprites and then we can say this is the short way of accessing a ds grid so basically you say ds grid and then the hashtag comes in and then hey on what position do you want to read out the value for once again uh, for the icons this is then the first position so 
the x value is always zero so here x value is always zero and then height uh, um, the y position is zero one and two and then we can do the same stuff for the text when once we we can uh, basically clone the thing once again we are just checking like hey on on our ds grid hey now uh, the second row which is then one and then uh, height uh, the y value of zero one and two of course you can do that with ds grid get this is of course then possible also then you would do it something like this and then uh, zero and one and then for example you can input that here but as you can see it looks a little bit clunkier uh, quick accessing uh, is kind of a neater way how to get those values and then for example we are drawing them on the screen so this is what you saw before and then of course nothing is happening because we are not doing anything now we just say like hey sweet we are we did set our values and just one thing before we start if you create a ds grid and store it into a variable then this stuff is getting stored in memory and all the entry points so uh, all these ones which we already filled with set are marked as undefined but of course if you set them then they are set to a specific value so here is the value of an index 0 1 and 2 and then for example we are just using from our sprite the indexes 0 1 and 2 and this is how we can kind of create our thingy here and of course then we draw that on the screen so basically the, the our collectibles our sprite with us with our specific index which we stored in the grid and then the text which we stored in the um, ds grid also of course you can store not just the uh, numbers of course you can store uh, strings also so something like you can do also not an issue uh, in my opinion so how can we make this as an inventory system so let's actually check this out before we start this we just say like sweet now we got our index position of zero one and two of, of our sprite stored in the ds grid which we're reading out and then here as values which we set as zero for the text values this is the um the point but for example how can we well uh kind of change now uh for example this value so once again this is then zero one and then for the x position it's then one and then zero one and two so basically this is the position of one two as an x or y value which we want to manipulate so basically we can have those cookies which we want to collect place them all around and then for example we can have just a collision with the player then we destroy the cookie but of course we just say like hey let's access the ds grid and then for example we are not setting but we are adding because setting means to reset the value which it is for example you could have before there a number now you can have a, a string or whatever but we are just adding to the value so we just say ds grid add and then what kind of position is it come on to the uh then one and two as described and then we're just adding one to it and then of course we're destroying the cookie and then once we run it then you see um, that this value in this ds grid is getting updated not changed of course changed also but updated and this is how the whole thing works in theory and practice of course there are more things to know about ds grids first of all if you create a ds grid please destroy it afterwards so if you don't use it then you say ds grid destroy and then of course you need to input the ds grid itself that you do later on for example if you don't need it and you want to discard it because um, if you don't do this this stuff lingers in uh, well in your memory and even though for example you're changing the room that stuff is still around therefore it's a good practice to always get rid of it when you don't need it of course in a destroy event or for example other room and or whatever wherever you need it but of course destroy it then there are of course a few more uh, comfy things for example if you want to override everything to a specific thing so for to a specific value you can say ds grid clear and then we just go on with the and then you can actually input a value which you want to clear so basically this is not clearing it this is just overwriting all the values inside with i don't know 
a big number this is then of course up to you how you want to do that this is just for clearing a whole ds grid of course you can uh, copy a ds grid which is pretty neat so ds grid copy and then you can copy one ds grid into another one then store that into another variable and then you can just have multiple clones or whatever here that is possible or for example you can sort your ds grid and as you can see there are quite a lot of things which are useful so for example the most useful ones are setting and getting of course getting easier with the hashtag accessor or for example what you can do is um what i did here a little bit advanced now i did here in the draw event i'm just uh, looping through the height and the width of a ds grid and then uh, drawing a sprite or drawing a entry point so basically you can actually create a bigger a more sophisticated uh, inventory system with that if you like of course this of course looks uh, kind of difficult for a tutorial therefore not gonna do that so if, as you can see you can um, loop through all the values if you like that uh, let's not make things too complicated so what else can we do we can actually override specific not just one value but of course we can uh, set and then as you can see there are more you can go disk which is just a radial overwriting um, from one position then you can override those values or for example this region then this is a rectangular position where you override it with one value and and then of course you got other things which you can do but most of them well you can shuffle you can even resize it so for example if you need more space for example if you have more entry points and you resize it to a smaller thing then uh, all those values are getting kicked out which you had so here um, take care <laughs> a little caution with this one and of course you can do uh, more things so ds grid width and height of course once again pretty good if you want to loop through those positions but for most people uh, getting and setting will be good enough so set and read out and then maybe add a cookie or whatever um, will be good enough for you so hopefully you got a more or less comprehensive view on ds grids not too difficult not too complicated very powerful a lot of uh, things which you can do but uh, for most people uh, the few things which this which you saw discussed here will be more than sufficient have a good one one up indie